Shall we start, Pippin? Yeah. Yeah. Namaste and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 24th session of Tuesday lecture series presented by Vigyan Prasar for the Vigyan Prasar Network of Science Club. I'm Dr. Nidhi Shrivastav, a project scientist from Vigyan Prasar and your moderator today. It's my privilege to welcome the esteemed panelists of today's session, Dr. P. Pramod, Principal Scientist, Salim Ali Center for Ornithology and Natural History, Coimbatore. Dr. Nakul Parashar, Director of Vigyan Prasar. Dr. Arvind C. Ranade, Senior Scientist and National Coordinator, Vipnet Clubs. Shri Sachin Narwadia and Mr. Vipin Singh Rawat from Vipnet team of Vigyan Prasar. I also welcome all the club members who have joined us for this session today. Thank you everyone for taking time out. India is one of the best places in the world to see the birds. India has more than 1250 bird species residing in various parts of the country. The tremendous diversity of birds contributes to their importance within the ecosystem. They perform various ecosystem services like controlling pests uh, in the agriculture and forestry, rodent control, pollination of plants, seed dispersal, forest regeneration, indicators of environmental health and have socio-culture and religious values. The pressure of anthropogenic activities destroying their natural habitat and factors like environmental degradation, changes in the land, use like rapid urbanization and pollution poses a serious threat to their survival. It also leads to ecological balance. Uh, it also leads to ecological imbalances. And our today's talk will cover a brief introduction to the diversity and ecological of the uh, ecolo ecology of the wonderful birds of our country, the major challenges in their conservation. Uh, and he will also introduce about the common birds of our surroundings in, in the India and their significance in our daily life. The, uh, the title of today's lecture is Birds of India, Their Ecology and Conservation. The speaker of today's talk is Dr. P. Pramod, Principal Scientist, Salim Ali Center for Ornithology and Natural History, Coimbatore. The talk will be as usual of 40 to 50 minutes, followed by an interaction session. I request all the viewers to, uh, they can type their question in the comment section of the YouTube box. Once the session will be uh, session was over, I will uh, ask the question to the expert. To begin with, I would like to invite our director, Dr. Nakul Parashar, sir, for the welcome remarks. Nakul, sir. Namaskar. Uh, it gives me an immense pleasure uh, to you know, be here today uh, on our regular uh, Tuesday lecture series from the Vipnet Vigyan Prasar Network Clubs. Uh, on behalf of entire Vigyan Prasar Vipnet, I welcome Dr. P. Pramod and really want to thank him from the core of my heart for having accepted our invitation to be our keynote speaker today. Birds have been uh, a great source of, uh, you know, ever since we, we've been on the planet, we have got birds all around us that make us uh, understand how life flows all over the place. In times when we did not have aeroplanes, uh, human beings always craved to fly like birds. Over a period of time, there's a lot that we owe to the birds, as rightly said by Dr. Nidhi Srivastava. The importance of birds in our lives are immense. Fortunately, we, we are very fortunate that we uh, were born in a country that has produced ornithologists of world order. Uh, uh, late uh, Dr. Professor, whatever we may call him, Salim Ali. I have a uh, few books and his most popular book, Birds of India or Bharat Ke Pakshi, has been um, a, a book which has colorful illustrations and the moment you open up that book you don't leave that book and it's a, such a ready reference that over and over whenever you feel like knowing more about birds you open up that book and so are many more stories and films that are available on YouTube. I know it's a very exciting topic and I don't want to step between Professor P. P. Pramodji and all of you. Uh, we are all very eager to hear you sir. And we once again want to thank you for having accepted our invitation. Uh, last but not the least, I, I would also want to thank and compliment uh, my senior colleague and dear friend, Prof. Dr. Arvind C. Ranade, for, because this lecture series is his brainchild. And ever since we got started, we have gotten a number of eminent speakers on this forum. It's a great, great uh, uh, service. 
in terms of science communication popularization and mandate dr arvind ranade i really want to congratulate and compliment you for this effort and also offer all my unconditional support for the bipnet clubs tuesday lecture series that you are organizing great job done bravo and i wish the bipnet team of dr nidhi shrivastava bipin and pavan bhati all the success in their endeavor thank you so much jai hind Thank you so much, sir. Now I request Arvind sir to please introduce our speaker. Arvind sir. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Nidhi. Sarva Pratham, today's uh, Mangalwar Vyakhyan Shrankhala, me, today's our main speaker, Dr. P. Pramod ji, and Vijayan Prasad ke manne nideshak mohde ji, Dr. Nupul Parasha ji. As for all the club coordinators, I would like to say that Vijayan Prasad ka jo ek अथक प्रयास हैं कि आप लोगों को अलग अलग विषय पे अलग अलग समय और मुख्य रूप से आज के समय में जो विषय हमारे लिए अति महत्वपूर्ण हैं जिस कारण हम उन नव युवकों को प्रेरित कर सकते हैं कि वो उस हर चीज के बारे में जाने समझे और आने वाले समय में विज्ञान को अपने जीवन का एक महत्वपूर्ण हिस्सा बनाए इसके लिए हमारी पूरी विज्ञान प्रसार की टीम माननीय निदेशक महोदय जी के नेतृत्व में काफी अच्छा काम करने के प्रयास करती है और उसी श्रृंखला में आज भी आप शायद मुझसे जरूर सहमत होंगे कि एक अलग सा विषय और शायद हम एक जिसको हम धरती पे रहने के बाद हम अपने जीवन के प्रति जिस प्रकार के विषय को लेके हम आगे बढ़ने की कोशिश करते हैं उसी इन्वायरमेंट में उसी वातावरण में पंछियों का स्थान भी बहुत अनन्य साधारण है जैसे नकुल जी ने कहा कि शायद आदमी को उड़ने की जो एक सर्वप्रथम कल्पना आई तो उसका कहीं ना कहीं हमें पंछियों को ही उसका श्रेय देना होगा क्योंकि उनके तरह हमारे को भी पर हो सकते हैं इस प्रकार की भावना मानव में आई और उसके कई सारे प्रयास आगे चल के किए गए बट उसी पंछियों के बारे में हमारे मन में कहीं ना कहीं जानने की हमेशा से ही एक जिज्ञासा रही है और इसी के कारण जैसे नकुल जी ने कहा कि भारत के एक महान वैज्ञानिक डॉक्टर सलीम अली जिनका नाम शायद जो भी ऑर्निथोलॉजी के लोग हैं पंछी पंछी विज्ञान के जो लोग हैं उनको तो वो नाम प्रसिद्ध है ही बट uh, जितने भी इन्वायरमेंटलिस्ट हैं उनको भी बहुत सारे लोगों को उनके बारे में जानकारी जरूर है तो आज भी हमारे बीच में आज ऐसे वक्ता हैं जिनका विज्ञान प्रसार के साथ बहुत लंबे समय का एक रिश्ता रहा है और प्रमोद जी का मैं जितना समझता हूँ जानता हूँ प्रमोद जी का जिस प्रकार का कार्य है Uh, I just would like to mention that I had an opportunity to have a nature walk with him on a very early morning when we had one of the program in Coimbatore, and I just had a, you know what one can say is a glance of the uh, knowledge repository that uh, Dr. Pramod sir has, uh, a person who has enormously a great passion for the I would say the birds and who knows various aspect about the bird. and i think he will be the right person and in fact this is the time especially in north india we all are aware that this is the time where lot of migration of the birds happen uh, right from the uh, northern uh, part of our uh, you know globe to india and in many places so this will be a right talk to hear as well as understand many aspect about the bird so it's a great privilege for me to introduce our respected uh, dr pramod sir Uh, as nidhi ji mentioned she is a he is a principal scientist at salim ali center for uh, ornithology and natural history coimbatore and he uh, has a doctorate in zoology and his work uh, was on community analysis of birds in the tropical evergreen forest of an uh, salent valley western ghat of india later he switched over to conservation biology and policy issues as a fellow of jawaharlal nehru center for advanced scientific research in bangalore he has worked for many years in developing field procedures and documenting traditional ecological knowledge through the people's biodiversity registers in india 
and a lot of people are working on them uh, especially at across the india as well for the uh, past 20 years as a head of the division of Nat nature education at sacon which is a salim ali uh, center for uh, ornithology and natural uh, history as uh, uh, natural history he has been uh, reaching out to the various stakeholders to create environmental and conservation awareness he has given lectures uh, to more than 3 lakh students and nature lovers so far he was awarded a fulbright nehru award for academic professional excellence in 2014 and worked in the michigan state of uh, university in united states he has successfully completed many scientific projects in the field of ecosystem assessment eco development programs and mitigation measures for the birds uh, bird hazard to the aircraft he has published more than 50 research papers in reputed national and international journals he has authored more than 14 books and have more than 40 popular articles in english tamil malayalam and hindi so i think it will be a right uh, to you know listen to dr p pramod and he will enlighten us about the birds perhaps we have never seen or we might have been seeing uh, at our uh, neighbors in our uh, you know environment around us but perhaps today we will really get a knowledge about what the whole ecosystem of bird is all together i welcome pramod sir thank you nidhi over to dr pramod shall i start yeah. yes sir okay first of all thank you vigyan prasad uh, respected uh, director of uh, vigyan prasad uh, uh, dr uh, uh, sir and then uh, dr nithi uh, sivastav uh, dr sachin narwadia and my dear friend uh, uh, ranade arvin ranade i'm very happy to be here and and i it is very i'm happy that i'm today talking to uh, hundreds of teachers across the country who are joining through the vigyan uh, vipnet network who are listening to this because uh, uh, today the topic is on uh, my area of interest and the particularly on birds i'm just going to share my presentation and i will uh, start this uh, program Uh, the topic which i have been asked to talk is on birds of india and its conservation uh birds is something uh, which everybody know it is there everywhere everybody are seeing it so uh if i ask anybody what will be the first bird we have seen most of the part of the country and the world people have the same answer almost same answer that will be a crow generally most of the time and in india in most of the lo location if you go there how many different species of crows many time i used to ask when students comes to me how many types or how many species of uh, crows you have seen even the most common the first thing which everybody know we know that bird very clearly but people are con will get confused how many exactly something with a gray in the hair something is totally black is it two different species or the same thing or some people say it is a male and female all that confusion still emerges these two are two different species of crows which everybody all of us know every all of us are seeing even for, but then only when we ask only people understand oh even for crow we have not carefully seriously seen and then in that kind of cases just just look at these two everybody would have seen these two species uh, crows which is one is the first one the uh, this with a gray in the hair uh, in the neck that uh, that people uh, generally this is called house crow the other one long bill crow or large bill crow, large bill crow or the jungle crow this one is a jungle crow this one is a house crow these two are very common species we we, we call it as a species because in biology we are talking about this is called species but how do we uh, understand this how do we appreciate it we and when in the introduction uh, the dr nidhi was also said we have more than 1200 uh, species uh, actually close to 1300 species 100 1300 species birds 
we have within India. So this many species, what does it actually mean by this thing? Just, I used to give a small, uh, some, when I'm talking to students in particular, I used to talk these two, just have a look at these two species. What is the, the variation, what you feel? For example, we can, we are seeing human beings like us, maybe Indian and some people from Negroid, Negroid people, some white people, some Chinese people. So what is it, the difference between a Chinese man and a Negro man or a white man? How do we place the physical looking difference? These two is looking more or these two looking more. When I'm talking to children, many times they say, of course, Chinese and uh, uh, a Negro man looks totally different. But actually, uh, you know, a Chinese man go and marry a Negro woman or they can have children. The child can go and marry a white man or a white woman. They can have children. All that is possible because we are all human beings. Whatever be the race we are, we are belongs to one species called Homo sapiens. But here we are telling these two are two different species. These two, the house crow and jungle crow cannot mate or cannot come up with a viable egg and a new uh, next generation. These are two totally different in, uh, living beings. So in a way, in another way, very, very uh, crude way to speak, a jungle crow looking at, or a house crow looking at a jungle crow is something like we look at a chimpanzee, our nearest species which we can. So the difference between two species, this is what the biological species concept is. So very close looking, but they are totally different. They cannot live together. They cannot come up with, they cannot mate. They are two different. Likewise, many group of birds have many, many species which build into 1,300 species of the birds in the country. I, today, today's lecture, what I'm going to do, in I'm not going to show you very rare and very unlikely. Most of the time, today, I am today want you to take through the wonderful birds which are in our surrounding, which we can learn a lot of things from them. The simpler, the most common birds which in our surrounding, only most of the places where we can. That kind of very common birds only we are looking into. Also some wonderful things in the world of birds, birds in, the, in India. So similarly, there are two species of jungle fowl. In the one with the top, we, what we see is a gray jungle fowl, which is very common in South India. The, this, uh, in the, the lower corner we have, this is a red jungle fowl. You know, wherever the chicken is there, anywhere in the world, the whole world chicken is a descendant of this red jungle fowl, our jungle fowl. We, whether it's a China, uh, America, China, Europe, wherever it is, the chicken, our domestic chicken is a descendant or domesticated uh, variety of our Indian red jungle fowl. These are the two species. This, is, this will be in the South India and this one will be in the North Indian forests. And similarly, just I want to, uh, one of the commonest species anywhere in the country and many, anywhere in the world, this is our common mina. Common mina, and then just look at the difference. Almost similar, but only the minor, very, very minor variations between these two. But again, as I said in the earlier, these two are, this is common mina, this is jungle mina, two different species, distinct biologically, genetically as have two different many many species of minas as the in that these two are this jungle mina is totally different it is there in the woodland and all they cannot live together they cannot live together in the sense they cannot mate and they even they don't even roost together most of the places another one the another two species of minas i just just i wanted to give you a glimpse of understanding about the kind of variability of variations of the birds with which we are living this is the uh, jungle sorry uh, this this is a brahmini mina or black headed mina but this one is our one of the another species of mina which is called hill mina hill mina is also known as well known for the mimicking capacity there is a one TV interview was there uh, talking with the human being. Some people were asking questions and the hillman answering it. Now, having said about the variation, what a species and all, I just want to take you through the kind of diversity of the bird with which we are living. What is the kind of number of birds are there in the world? How many species are there in the world? 
actually the way i told you the biological species concept based on the morphology of the species we are actually the we know from the uh, database we have 10400 and a little more few more that then more than 10000 we can essentially we say that many species are there in the world of which 1300 are there in india almost more than 12% nearly 12% of the birds are there in india of the world but now recently a study has gone in detail into the the phylogenetic relationship between the uh, between the species based on the genetic understanding genetic barcoding techniques and some of there is a recent some papers have come predicting actually this 10400 is a wrong interpretation of looking only the morphological and biological aspect which is an outdated one actual number is more than 18000 that's what the new scientific information speaks but again scientists are not agreeing there's a still debates going on between this issue but definitely more than 10000 species of birds are there in the world of which more than 100 and uh, 1200 species 1300 species are there in india of this 60% of them are a special group called passerine a smaller birds with a very fragile bonds and very flying a smaller ones which are called passerine because the perching bird they sit on the perches and they can live uh, even sleep in the night within a small perches it will not fall down because when they uh, uh, when sitting on a very small perch and then they uh, uh, bend the, their legs it will get these fingers will get locked this is a particular characteristic of the plant the birds and which allow them to sleep anywhere even a small twigs the predators cannot come and uh, feed them that gave a special ad evolutionary advantage in them which makes them their su survival much more better but unfortunately because of our own uh, many many uh, characteristics and behavior and atrocities towards the world to as of now on the result more than 12% of the total bird species in the world is endangered last uh, 300 years more than 153 species lost from the face of earth and one of the main reason for we by which we have the scientists have come up with why these birds are getting extinct becoming endangered is their living space their habitat is getting destroyed we are encroaching everywhere whether it's a forest wetland water body everywhere we are encroaching and destroying their main habitat there are many other reason but major larger reason of the 60% of the extinction as well as the 60% of the, the, uh, this endangerment is habitat destruction see this bird in the photograph is a osprey osprey is a fish hawk it 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 feeds on the uh, fishes on the street it is a globally it's a cosmopolitan all the many other countries it is there it it travels it across the world it is it is seen now coming to india i have already told you more than 1300 species of birds are there in indian subcontinent of which about nearly more than 2000 subspecies more than so more than 1000 of them are resident here then winter visitor endemic many of them are endemic and all that okay this bird in the in, uh, in this uh, box is called it's a very it's very cute beautiful uh, fly catcher called monarch fly catcher or black nipped blue fly catcher now coming to the conservation issue and very specifically in india we have 85 of the uh, of the total birds are considered as very threatened of these 15 of them are critically endangered their number is so limited it's almost towards close very close to extinction if you don't do something seriously many of them go extinct and endangered about some 16 are very seriously endangered and similarly another 54 of them are vulnerable to the uh, endangerment very vulnerable so all these put together 85 species are considered as 80 you see this is threatened threatened birds of the country similarly another 67 is near threatened all these put together about 152 species in the country is in a very serious threat of extinction some of the birds like the one is in the background this is called pink headed duck which thought to be extinct from india similarly another mountain quail is another bird himalayan mountain quail which is also is can understand now we we believe that it is gone extinct but some birds are critically endangered like our the famous uh, great indian bustard and the bengal florican and also recently we have made one of the very uh, very significant bird our white backed vulture into close, uh, critically endangered, endangered and are very close to brought them to very close to extinction 
but there are some some uh, happy newses like uh, forest spotter uh, owl is forest owlet and then jerdens couser these are a couple of birds after we thought is got extinct have we could uh, uh, see the rediscover also but this is the broad picture but now i'm just what i will do we'll just get into sort of uh, um, i'll go through a series of uh, uh, slide show in which i will introduce the wonderful world of birds for example one of our let me start with our national bird this national bird this character of their dance is literally in literature everywhere so much written about it and everybody loved to see it also but uh, i know many people if the many of the farmers in the country will not be very happy with this bird because it's become it has become a pest nowadays for the agriculture but however this bird is has an ecological role and they are very they had and but then because of the now the poaching is not there ecosystem is climate change also probably is adding to this uh, issue but this number is increasing everywhere but the next one coming into uh, just the next bird this is a not a photograph it is more of a drawing just i just why i brought this sort of a photograph i brought this. this is a very common bird across the country which is called brahmani kai many of the many places i you can see the people worship this bird when a kite or a people sometimes the people call eagle but it's a kite kite with a, this white in the throat and head people will this is considered as our garuda of our purana but sometime when i am talking to children the people they will ask me why why this is this is worshiped or what is the importance of this bird many time in in our culture many birds animals and or some assigned to certain kind of gods uh, like uh, durga to uh, tiger and then uh, many 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 animal even the subramanya to the, uh, this uh, peacock this particular bird to vishnu's aswahana vehicle what could be the what is the some speciality our traditionally ancestors have seen uh, to this bird it's not only to this bird many of these raptors in particularly for this bird if they have these raptors are in wherever the ecosystems are there in that ecosystem they are the apex predators why we are very much keen on specializing or interested in the conservation of the tigers it's not only tigers are getting endangered tiger is very critical in the ecosystem wherever they are living in any forest area most of the tiger you know a tiger uh, to um, uh, uh, one tiger for to live in a forest area it needs at least one big uh, deer for every week like that it need every week one big deer or one larger animal because it cannot go and eat small insects or small uh, frogs or something like it's like it's eco that niche is its niche is different so suppose if every week one big animal is required for example for a, for a discussion here imagine it's a deer every week one deer required means in a year 52 deer is required for a tiger one tiger to live in one forest area so Uh, that means 50 year 50 deer should be kept aside for as a food for this tiger generally the forest capture rate is something like a 10% 10% at least 500 uh, deer should be there uh, for one tiger to survive in a forest area suppose somebody is telling in a forest area many uh, tigers are there that means there is a lot of deer and their food prey prey population is very much high that means in turn that forest is highly productive the food food availability the plant availability is very good so the tiger is an indicator of the quality of the forest area similarly many of these raptors are indicator of the ecosystem good quality ecosystem of uh, the quality of the ecosystem this particular bird is a wetland bird this uh, uh, brahmani kite or garuda or krishna parand just whatever call in different different uh, area location this particular bird is a apex predator of many of the water bodies uh, many of the water bodies and this uh, this uh, 
that one reason that one reason probably these people our traditional uh, people would have understood the importance of many of the, our vehicles and all traditional uh, really god uh, vehicles of the traditional uh, really assigned this kind of animals and birds are one way or other way we can see ecologically important some keystone species of the ecosystem this is something very unique this is not their understanding this is one of such wonderful bird this is called a uh, garuda or whatever by the tradition but it's a gramini kite it has a it, it will be feeds on fishes sometimes snakes and that's why the old story of the uh, snake and uh, garuda connection and there are some other birds similarly uh, other kites this kite these two are other kites this left one everybody know this one everybody know every city where all this this is wherever whenever you see the eagle in the city particularly particularly in the uh, garbage dumping area look at his tail this fish the fish tail this kind of a cut is there this means this is a black kite black kite is one of the main scavenger in the city uh, uh, all of the uh, waste dumping areas and this is uh, one uh, this is there everywhere across the city and also this see we have to, the people were thinking that it will be there in the city and urban they are not moving and uh, there is a recently there are some studies coming this birds are so migrating very extensively there are reports now recent papers are uh, telling it is coming from even uh, there are some groups coming from the thailand to india there are some go, uh, groups of this thing coming from even Ma mongolia to india it's a very interesting thing information are coming this is another bird which is called again is another kite white shouldered kite this is a very interesting right can it can you can see it mostly in the uh, stalling in the air this is called air stalling it is just as if the bird is uh, standing without flying anywhere on the air the next one there are two eagles i wanted to uh, two species of eagle i want to introduce you this one left one is a crested hawk eagle and this is a crested uh, serpent eagle both of them have crest very beautiful crest serpent eagle from the name itself you can understand they have special affinity interest towards uh, snakes and both of them used to hunt snakes some even and all that thing inside the forest area and it is there cosmopolitanly across the country many places then uh, now the two other uh, different different areas niches birds which i wanted to introduce you before we talk to something about in detail about their cons conservation this particular bird is one of these both these are vultures uh, these both this was this is white backed vulture and indian vulture four species of vulture particularly three species of vulture where they are very critically endangered because of our atrocity or in a way we speaking uh, a one medicine which we call we used for our uh cattle uh, treatment for the cattle which is called diclofenac happened to be uh, mainly affecting this bird when the cattle the body after the death has thrown out they have eaten the the, the carcasses and the residues in the muscles has gone inside and that has created a kidney failure and death it was it took time for us to understand what's the main cause of the complete decline of this species but now we are almost sure about some 8 percent of the this population of this vulture particularly the white back vulture is crashed due to the one of our actually we were never actually we were not intended to bring this species down we did for something else you can, now you can understand our in many of our activity it can have different indirect effect on the living our environment like birds this one the next one now i just different different groups of birds i want to introduce you another eco service which we have if uh, uh, the vultures and the uh, eagles and kites have different kind of uh, ecosystem services this one uh, has this what is called thane is called basically with sunbirds many people when they see this birds when i am asking what is this bird people say it's a uh, hummingbird there is no hummingbird in india this is sunbirds which because you see that bird is going with their sharp straw like beak and drinking nectar from the flower this uh, this this is the the uh, this one 
the completely black one is the purple sunbird. This is a purple rumped sunbird. There are some many species of sun, sunbirds are there. The two more on a common sunbirds, I'm just putting it. There are many species of sunbirds also there. But they, when they go to the flowers for drinking the nectar, they take the pollens and they help in many trees, the pollen transfer, their pollination process. And that is very one of the another ecosystem services of the birds. These two are called barbets. This is uh, one of the, there are many species of barbets are there in the country. This one is called, uh, the first one, the small one is the uh, coppersmith barbet because the sound, it sounds like a, a barbet. It was just, uh, a, somebody banging on a copper vessel, tong, 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 and that's kind of keep on banging. So that's why it's given, given this name of coppersmith barbet. Another one, this next one is a white cheeked barbet or earlier it, it was named as a small green barbet, but this white-cheeked barbet or brown-headed barbet or all these, this, this set of birds also, all these barbets are fruit eaters, small, small fruit they eat. In the forest area in particular, the distribution of the seeds, the actual, that process is the role of the, uh, this fruit eaters. Many times, the vitis has been very scientifically proved the seeds which travel through the gut of the uh, bird has a especially special uh, potential to come up and survive for survive in the in the competition in the forest area so in that way if you take it many most of the trees surviving inside the forest area must have been dispersed and distributed by the the fruit eating birds so this particular uh, white cheek barbet is a very common sound anywhere in the South India when many, most of the barbet sounds are because most of the barbet sound wherever, most of the species of the barbet, wherever they are, it is the, many people, because, because they green, generally green in color, we will not see them. They will be hidden in somewhere in the leaves, but their sound will be familiar to many people. For this one, generally people in anywhere in the forest in South India, you, you can hear kind of a sound. This is a very, some of the very interesting bird and it is, and it is a fruit eater. And uh, now coming to pigeons. Uh, this, okay. Uh, okay. This is the most common pigeon, which all of you know. Uh, this is a, what we call blue rock pigeon. This blue rock pigeon is the, it, this is another I would say now it has become a pest because of because of our some of our characters. In an urban area, we keep on feeding birds, but the number of the birds in a, most of the urban area it is exploding actually. Whereas this one, it's called spotted dove. This uh, this pigeon can uh, it, it can fly about almost whole day or a huge distance. But this generally, this doves, sorted doves at car can even one minute or two minutes, it cannot fly. It's a very uh, it's a short flying, short distance flying bird. Whereas these are the very common to village and city, urban and village area birds. However, these two are forest birds. This is a green pigeon or, or gray fronted green pigeon, very musical in nature. It is a very, very enjoyable, it's a, that uh, song in the, in the very long, very, very musical, very different knotted kind of a long whistle they have. Whereas this bird, which is called uh, uh, emerald dove, it is an emerald colored dove, which is a state bird of Tamil Nadu, and it's very shy, understory forest area bird. Again, so what I, why I'm just bringing a few examples of each group, two, three, two, three variation. In each group, there are many, many species of birds all put together, our 1,300 species in the, in the country. And they are basically fruit eaters. And another set of fruit eaters, the very interesting group of uh, birds, which is called uh, our uh, hornbills. It's a horn-like bill. Bill means big. It's, it has a beak like the horns. And this, both this, they, they have a very interesting uh, family uh, story. After the mating, uh, the male and female go together and find out a very a small um, uh, hole inside in the in the tree, big tree, and inside the female will go inside, clean up inside, and then throw all the wastage. Then uh, both both of them together will uh, almost close the entrance and with a with a small slit, 
and the almost three, three and a half months, this female will be inside just like a jail. And she will first shed the feathers and make a cushion in the cushion like bed and then that one or two uh, eggs they will put it and she will brood over it. And outside the male will have continuous work to bring food, fleshy fruit, fruit for because the female will not come out. It need water as well as food. So she he will bring freshy fruits inside for the female. And they, she will keep on eating and whatever waste she will throw out. And whatever shade waste she throw out, he will clean it up and throw it far away because no snake or other bird or animal should know there is a trapped bird inside because otherwise they will come and predate them. So what they will, she, he will keep her the whole, he protect the nest and keep and clean everything and bringing food and all. Even when the chicks comes out, when the chicks comes out after some time, he will hear from outside the inside, the chicks are ready, children are ready. So he has to bring special food for the chicks. Generally, this is a fruit eating, purely fruit eating bird. But while the when the chicks are growing time, the father will bring special uh, insects and even caterpillar and small, small lizards and all because it need a special protein use food for the growth. So after two, three, three and a, three hours or three and a half hours, this is so three, three and a half months or four, uh, close to four months, they they break open and they come out. And this is this is a very unique kind of a family story for many of the uh, the hornbills they do. This is a grey hornbill. Sorry, sorry, previous. This is uh, this is a this one is a grey hornbill, and this one this grey hornbill. This is a, uh, a common grey hornbill, and this one is the great pied hornbill. Or great Indian hornbill or great pied hornbill. Great pied hornbill is a state bird of Kerala, and also Nagaland, I think. Then uh, they are very huge birds when they are flying, the kind of sound. It is very, very, very interesting birds to know and enjoy as well as to be owned. Like we are proud to have these kind of interesting birds with our in our surrounding and it is our job. When these birds, another interesting thing, these birds survival is directly, conservation is directly linked with the larger trees and the larger uh, trees with the larger holes. And also inside the forest area, these are large fruit eating birds. The large cedar tree survival is connected with their survival because these birds only can swallow the large seeds and take them to large for the dispersion for the different area location. Smaller birds, smaller fruit eating birds cannot swallow the large cedar fruits. So this is this way, some sort of a mutualistic relationship is there between the birds and the trees. You know, the well-known uh, story of a tree and a dodo that uh, the bird which is uh, uh, extinct from Mauritius had a connection with the tree. And this, when the bird is extinct, even the tree also has gotten, because many of the bird, the seeds have, he will get the vitality only when it goes through the gut of that particular bird. So we will go to the other, which is some common set of birds. This is very common, very common across the country, bulbul. Bulbul, uh, this uh, red vended bulbul and red whiskered bulbul. There are right broad bulbul, yellow broad bulbul. So many different species of bulbuls are there. And this is another interesting uh, bird, which is a black drongo. Black drongo is across the country we have. And this, uh, the, this, uh, you see this one small white spot, this uh, final, uh, final uh, distinction. Distinctly, we can say this is the purple. This is the identifying character of the black drongo among the many species of drongos. Black, black drongo is a very small, many of the drongos, most of the drongos are very good mimicry artists. And also they are very good fighters. When they make a nest in a forest area, many uh, thieves like uh, who, uh, ride, who come for the ride of the nest, like crows and eagles and all kind of will not come close because this small bird can chase them far away. Many times you can see this small black bird chasing the big eagle and very, very far away. Uh, then, uh, and also this, uh, because of this, this unique character of this bird is uh, uh, this capacity to mimic. Why do they mimic? Even there are people have recorded uh, this particular small bird mimicking the scooter starting, the sound of electronic alarm, and so, so many. Definitely, I, I myself has heard this bird is uh, making sounds of other eagles and uh, different different uh, birds. Why do they do? A lot of uh, needs to be studied, understood in the context in which they are living. What is the significance of that wonderful character? Why do they do mimicking other birds' sound? They themselves have their own sound as well. 
okay and uh, some more birds like uh, this bird is a pied, pied bush chat which mostly you can see in the grassland and agricultural land everywhere but many time another bird very closely similar but female of this this is a indian robin in this indian robin female is also some may sometime this and that many people get confused it when they are but these two are similar looking but definitely with the behavior and the character and ecology to, uh, totally even even color also so there are variations this is called indian robin another very common robin across again country is the magpie robin many of the part in many parts of the country this bird very melodious singer early morning morning bird calls this is a part of this this is the major contributor to the morning chorus of the morning chorus of the bird songs this is a magpie robin and this is one another interesting bird so many time i used to i was uh, first to show this slide and ask the audience because today unfortunately i don't have the audience face to face uh, but however i am just telling generally ask him what is this bird you know many people will uh, say sparrow sparrow don't have yellow colors and what what after some time because this bird people it's a very common uh, particularly village areas and are very common birds and if you show the next photograph everybody will know majority of the people know what is this bird the reason being many time even if we see we don't carefully see in the in the under, for understanding the world of uh, world of nature the, or even any any part of the science understanding the science the science the most important factor of uh, the, the in the process of science is the observation unless we learn how to do careful observation and think behind the things reasons behind it the science will not progress in us so the observation is the most critical whether it's in nature on the lab or wherever it is so many many this bird is a very common all of you i am sure know this bird when i if i show the next slide this is the bird you know this is everybody know majority of the people will be knowing this is a weaver bird baya weaver bird baya this weaver bird is a wonderful character in the uh, in the in the in the among the birds because you know this 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 you can dr salim ali has done so much research work many of the salim ali students have done so many research work still lot of things to be known, known about this bird but however there are some people have attempted to study how many types of knots this small bird is making to make this wonderful nest they have stopped by different varieties about more than 90 different types of knots they have identified and separated and still it is there because the intricate knot making intricate in compact and in interestingly this most of the this is actually the nest is made by males male will make the nest almost half without probably many time without the lower uh, the tunnel and the the bedroom part will be over then she he will wait for a female to come and uh, inspect the the house generally the female will go come inside and uh, if she likes the house she will may marry her, uh, him that means they mate and they they bring up uh, the family inside the nest in case some female goes there and check up and then she could not uh, they reject it and she goes she didn't like it many times with what happens the female will get sad, male will get sad and he sometimes he will even abandon and the whole process and go and start a new thing so in a colony of the baya weaver bird when if you see a half made uh, abandoned nest that could be you can infer, uh, infer that that could be a one of the rejected proposal this is the kind of uh, life they have but this is beauty of the making the you, someone has to see how intricate the making the, then only the actual enjoyment of the bird watching will come the similarly that was a weaver and this is a tailor tailor bird is actually what a tailor do it stitches then uh, uh, our dress and all no similarly it, it takes up two leaves or something one be very big if it bend one leaf or then they mostly take up two leaves and stitch on the sides with a small thread and makes uh, and put some cotton or some soft material inside and put some two eggs and bring up the uh, family 
most of the nest please remember the nest of the bird is not like our home this is not the place for they go for resting nest of the birds are, are the place where they bring up their chicks there in the uh, they lay eggs and bring up the chicks by the time the leaf get dry they will finish their family development and their family comes up they have very sharp needle like beak using which many time when they make this bird is there most of the places sometime in the mango trees in very nearby some large leaves leaf to trees even if you are a orchard or even garden it will be there but they have a great capacity to make the nest in such a way that when many angles of our movement we will not be able to see there is a nest will be there that is their concealment potential whenever we study about the bird nesting qualities and character we will so to what extent it is concealed from the general peoples and animals movement area they have the great potential for that so now another couple of very interesting birds very beautiful birds this is uh, uh, called orioles and this oriole the one uh, this one is a uh, uh, golden oriole then golden oriole is a bird mostly uh, they nest in himalayan region and uh, during migratory season it comes to south india and region but however this uh, the, the it's very close relative another species black hooded oriole is they makes nest in south india and many other places across the country so these two are orioles again insectivorous insect eating birds beautiful birds colorful and uh, interesting uh, birds which move around just around in our surrounding then some other birds like uh, this bird it's a roller roller is a bird the because the name it got because it fly on the top and they fall a very uh, it's just a roll down as a sort of aerial acrobatic it shows just again to attract a female in the birds there's a most of the uh, in survival of animal world particularly on birds uh, they are fundamental most of the characters and behaviors and uh, even body structural everything is will be designed for their survival to get food to get mate and to say escape from the predator these are the three fundamental things is required for them for example this uh, this is mostly a grassland bird guys eat from the grassland even in the tree insects basically insect eating bird sometime looking at this blue color of this particular interesting bird many people call it as a even a kingfisher but it is not kingfisher it is roller or olden name in the olden books of the salim ali you may see this name as a even a blue jay indian blue jay also then another uh, uh, similarly uh, another big group of bird is our woodpeckers woodpeckers is another wonder of the uh, world, uh, world of birds because just imagine how strong is our tree bar tree, tree trunk this small bird with a chisel like a beak fitted into the forehead it drill the whole tree when just even if you shake your head how you will got our brain will get or we will get a, a, a headache and all. but you just imagine it drill it it hit the uh, uh, tree trunk with their head and the head on the on the top, uh, on the fourth front, front side of the head you have, it has the very chisel like a uh, beak and drill and make a big holes inside and inside based on their that drumming you the kind of vibration he will he or she will understand what is the kind of inside is there any grub going or a insect is there inside the tree trunk then it drill and go and reaches to that and it has a special type of type of tongue in the tip of it there is a hook very long one is actually more than three size three times size of the actual the beak it will have it throw the tongue inside and through the hook it pull that uh, um, uh, inside going the grub or a, uh, that uh, larvae pull it out and eat them and that is a unique character of and in that process it make lot of small small holes in the forest in the tree and these holes become the uh, initial part for the many of the whole nesting birds this is where they are helping each other many of the whole nesting birds initial part of the hole making this the woodpecker makes so woodpecker is a very critical important uh, uh, species inside the forest and in our surrounding because not only it reduces insects and all it gives the holes for the other hole nesting in bird species 
another very interesting again my small bird you can see throughout walking around the uh, trunk and branches just running around rather than is that natachas you can see many species like this is a welfare fund natach natach then many kind of small small it's bird called natachas very cute beautiful and when you see this behavior of how they go and catch up a small small insect is very interesting to see it another very everybody know every the moment everybody okay this is a, uh, a parrot okay in india this long tail parrots are called parakeets so this is the most common rose wing parakeet which is there across the country uh, similarly there are many blue wing parakeet malabar parakeet or alexandrin parakeet and uh, blossom headed parakeet there are many many species are available in the country Uh, I'm just go just a little fast faster because there is another set of group called wag tail. It keep on wagging the tail in the, all the time. These wag tails are again insectivorous bird, mostly seen close to water body or water tank kind of a thing. So this is another interesting bird which you can see in our surrounding. Another set of group is called babblers or seven sisters or all the time it have continuously making sound. That's why probably it would have been called babblers. This left one is one. The, okay, the previous one to uh, wag tail. This one is a white broad wag tail. It's a grey wag tail. And these two are the jungle babbler and the white uh, yellow bill babbler. This is mostly South India. Yellow bill babbler is very uh, common. Jungle babbler also different. Uh, it is various uh, distribution. But in North India, when you go common babblers and even white head, this uh, uh, common babbler is much more common than these two. Then uh, this and then comes to the bird skull swallows. Barn swallow and even a uh, red drum swallows. Many of the swallows and sift sifts uh, will spend most of their time in the air, eating the small small insects across the country. Okay, so across the uh, uh, small small insects in, in the air, and they are that is very 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 large number of uh, species are there in the, this group. Similarly, there is a bird called leaf bird. Mostly, it will be uh, camouflaged with the leaf in the forest areas and uh, in the trees. This is also a very good mimicry artist. It's called earlier the name of this bird was Chloropsis, but it's a very mimicry art, mimicry making, beautiful, colorful birds. This is called leaf bird. This is another interesting bird, just like a small ball. It's a, this is it's a, again my, my migrating from Himalayas to South India and South India to uh, Himalaya regularly. This is uh, called uh, Pitta. indian pitta very colorful uh, beautiful bird this is called ayor again many parts in south indian and uh, many other parts of the country even all over india it is there this bird is called ayora very musical one study which uh, is happen in salimali center i can try to record all the calls of this bird where 35 different calls of this birds Uh, were recorded different different calls are recorded of this interestingly only one type of call was from female and all the other 34 were from uh, males so males always have a competition to impress female through calls through colorful color through various ability of making nest and then dance and so many thing in the in the in the in the, in the competition for the survival it is a, a males uh competition it is competition is between the female to get a female and take their gene to the next generation that is a very critical factor for their survival may female is the decision maker they don't need to worry about it their gene anyway is going so females have to compete between them that is why probably the colorful talents and the ability to sing everything is with the females sorry with the males So now another set of group lark mostly gra gra grassland area. This is called bush lark. Uh, this lark is similarly you must have heard of sky lark. This is a bush lark, sky lark, and then coming to some another group of birds uh, which is uh, flycatchers. I'm not going to the very large group of good number of flycatchers are there. I'm not going to the real world flycatchers. This is a very uh, across the country common. Uh, this is called uh, paradise flycatcher, Asian paradise flycatcher. The male Uh, have a fully white and long tail and a black crest some of the female males have e e juvenile as in subadult also will have instead of this white places in many subadults will have a completely rufous reddish coloration 
and this in some case some area even the adult may also retain the rufous and we have a but mostly they have this white and then sub adult and young ones have this rufous coloration female also rufous without this long tail uh, and this almost this is a very interesting bird uh, another one is tree pie very colorful bird uh, is it's a corvid like a crow kind of a, um, close to crow you can see this is a very this is a called tree pie another one is again uh, it's called crow pheasant or cow cow it is called uh, in Th south india it's called sempotha in tamil and malayalam and all in uh, uh, in north india also. It, it's it's there everywhere across the country uh, this is uh, in bengal it's adichacha uh, or something that's uh, there are recently there are interesting uh, behaviors a very um, slowly uh, slow flying but very interesting there is another wonderful insect eating bird called hoopo hoopo hudhud hindi hindi mein hudhud is a, this is a, this is something it has a very interesting crest and a, a, a very beautiful colorful bird, indian bird there is another bird is called a bee eater uh, again from the name itself you can understand it's an insect eater like, uh, it's it makes nest in the soil holes in the soil you can see the green bee it has a small green with the additional bee beyond the uh, its uh, tail there is another extension this another one a, a white eye this is the name of this bird in the high altitude and area and sometime even some area in the low altitude also this is a very common bird wherever they are there it's common but it's not widespread wherever they are there it is common this is another interesting thing people you can see a bird but it is camouflaged to the tree trunk because this is night jar night jar has to live they are active in the night but the daytime they have to somehow survive the day active birds and animals will come and destroy them they will eat them or attack them so they have to hide so that's why evolution has given a pro, helped them to come up with a camouflage dress so that in very on the other birds and animals Uh, cannot that easily spot them they they can somehow hide they are basically insect eating birds then one of our famous most famous sparrow sparrow people are now telling all from all the cities everywhere is getting of course because sparrow is actually come and serve with human we they have their whole nesting particular character feeding everything is associated with the human beings when we change our lifestyle they somehow they could not adjust they used to nest with our old thatched roof there is a our old style of house making there are a lot of gaps were there they used to go and make nest in there now we are new uh, uh, concrete strong uh, structure where without any gap we have started making they don't have space for making nest and similarly earlier tradition of tradition of giving food in to animals and things were there that is also not by gray grains or something in generally they used to get even from the very distributed way they used to get food that is also not there in the new urban scenario they don't see a place for but wherever they are there village area and the certain kind of agri wherever the agriculture is not intensively lot of chemicals are not used this bird is there otherwise in the very heart of the major urban areas and all, this bird is almost not available nowadays once upon a time millions were there but now it has come down then coming to the our owls owls are very very interesting group they they work there without any uh, for us they work i would say in the night this bird the owl this is the barn owl this is there across the country across the world actually and they work they with they in the night they can fly without any sound even if it fly very close to us we will not know they are flying so this is something very very unique a unique character they have because they have a specialized wings and feathers in the feathers they have a double locking system which can help them with flying without any sound that character makes and because they have their the reason is they are the main rat catchers rodent catchers the night they have to rats are very smart you know you know the story of uh, mickey mouse and all similarly all the smart rats they have to outsmart them for which they have all their eyes and wings and everything is specialized for it 
and in india we have more than nearly 35 different species of owls across the country for all kind of ecosystem they are there and they are doing their work over and over all the time that's why we are happy living otherwise the rise the ability in india we have more than 120 species of rodents are there they can their the ability to growth is very high they can actually finish the whole ecosystem but this biological control of the rodents which is a major detriment of our agriculture system is done through this this is why our traditional people our many of the villages i have seen the farmers put some platform in the field because this night this owls will come they will safeguard the whole area from the mice i mean for the field rats so this this our traditionally our people had many ecological understanding to deal with the system this another small spotted owlet which is there very small main insect eater and many even small uh, uh, rats and all they will eat but mainly insect eater now i since we don't have much time i'll quickly go through a lot of uh, photo few photographs about the water related this is a kingfisher which is not a, a regular uh, it is a kingfisher which it eat fishes and water area also but it can survive even with the places where there is no water also this is a white throated kingfisher this is a small blue or a small uh, or common kingfisher this is a pied kingfisher little pied kingfisher all three different species of kingfishers this bird is called a uh, lapwing just some of you can identify there is a two x in between the two legs it just camouflage with the surrounding just like the soil we will not be able to see if you are walking if the bird is not there sometimes this bird is very smart if we sometimes we we are get fooled with the with the color but the animals like a dog they come with a smell so if it come close by the chicks are there eggs are there, they will that's a danger for them so what this bird is do they will run slow without making sound run to a farther distance from near from the nest and then make sound and even act like they are broken its wings so the other predator will go directly close to them and suddenly uh, it will take far far away and save the the nest this kind of all cheating they will do this another that is a red wattle lapwing this is a red wing, the yellow wattle lapwing this is a pond heron another interesting bird this is a peasant tail jacana another interesting bird in the most of the, in the world of birds the interestingly uh, the there is a uh, pair bonding is there a very large number of birds some birds but uh, the pair bonding is not some most of the cases male female together make nest some cases males will make uh, next uh, and female will took after the breeding other activities after the mating both of them help in most of the cases some cases female only will do all the bringing up the children males after the mating they will go but in the case of this was jacana they the actually the other way around female will uh, lay eggs and give the whole responsibility to the male and then she will go to another male that is a kind of uh, uh, happening in the jacanas this is a egrets which you can see everywhere this is if it is a beak uh, is a black you can see this is a little egret this is a cattle egret yellowish beak mostly they walk around behind the cattle and in search for the insect that's why it's called cattle egret this is called cormorant that is across the country we can see this is called uh, water some sort of a counterpart we can say in the water for the crows but it's a cormorant and then another is, there is a group of callbirds storks in the stork this is a very common open bill stork even if the beak if they close there is a gap in between you can see that's why it's called open bill stork this is a bird called darter it's again vulnerable it's a very uh, uh, group of very uh, certain group of not threaten vulnerable uh, uh, threaten group of birds is called uh, this is the uh, the neck is something like a snake if it fly if it is swimming in the water with the body inside the water you will feel that in the neck it says some snake is moving in in the water uh, also it's called darter it's called snake bird and this one is a purple heron again it's a very big bird very nice water bird mostly the farmland paddy fields water bodies you can see everywhere gray heron another heron group across the country you can see this then this coot again a migratory local migratory migratory bird because this is coming in south 
and uh, uh, this is uh, it is this unique characteristic that uh, that uh, forehead that white patch in the forehead there is an indian mohan another water bird this is a very one beautiful star called painted star painted stalks these all these painted stalks and uh, uh, then similarly another bird called uh, uh, ibis black headed or ibis or white ibis this particular bird you look at that you, the unique character of its beak this bird is a pin tail duck many of them are migrating for example this bird pin tail duck coming all the way from siberia and siberia you know northern part of the russia and uh, all the way to our even till till south india it comes every year by september october it comes and go back in february march this is something and thousands and thousands of birds come every year and this is a, a pelican so spot billed pelican there are many species pelican even great white pelican in north india and many places north so great white pelican is not very common in south india but spot billed pelican is common south india but again this is a, a threatened bird in india totally more than 5 6 7 000 birds only are not in the world that's only here this is a tallest bird in india we can't see in the south india but north india mainly north indian agricultural field you can see where many places number is nowadays reducing many places this is called saurus crane saurus crane again because of the too much uh, usage of our pesticides in the agricultural land this bird is in danger when we use our ecosystem our eco surrounding area without any uh, ethics too much of chemical and pollution this our uh, partners in the nature like these birds are getting affected this is one of the tallest bird up to even 7 6 feet sometime it grows and this is a called saurus crane another one very interesting bird is a flamingo flamingos that look at its beak you know what could be can you guess what's the food of this bird this is the food of this bird is plankton plankton this takes a sea when take the plankton and eat from the play uh, in uh, gujarat kach area many 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 thousand lakhs of birds are available and they travel to south india where the tangle many of the water bodies endure migrating uh, very many places across the country there are two species mainly a greater pelican white pelican and really smaller smaller two species are there see sometime when you go to the wherever they are there they are uh, they are breeding location and are, their number is too many high you can see very very large if you read salimari's uh, 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 autobiography fall of a sparrow he's traveled towards this pelican city and all sorry this uh, flamingo city and there uh, that initial expedition and all can very you can read and enjoy with that uh, nostalgic uh, feeling whoever likes nature and birds you have a special experience you will have then certain now some wonderful thing i want to share with you these are birds when a large level migration this came you know, thousands and thousands of birds together in a flock they fly not only migration even local movement and all when this many birds fly together and take turn this way that way direction change everything just sometimes just wonder why each of them won't hit each other and fall they can't they don't hit each other and fall this whole so this is a very wonderful thing which is happening millions of birds sometimes see the another fly these are birds flying together they don't hit each other but they fly together how do they take that uh, they, how, what they, what sometimes the whole flock will take a sudden fraction of a second turn how it is happening what is actually how that from the one end of the flock to another friend how what how the, the message of turning is passed these are the fundamental scientific curious question people are now started pondering on trying to find um, answers to that just see the wonders of the bird migration bird just have some photograph just to to feel how wonderful is the world of birds and this one bird you must have read in the books and papers and that wonderful bird this bird is called arctic tern probably the bird which see the sun maximum 
because when the sun goes to northern hemisphere the bird also goes there so when when the sun comes to southern uh, hemisphere birds comes there so it, the sun maximum time this is considered as the bird which travel maximum distance until even now in many of the books you will say what is the longest traveling migratory bird they will say archite it is was true but recently new technique of studies with the telemetry and dark kind of the radio telemetry scientists have found out another species of bird called sooty shearwater which is also a bird which is full time living in the sea only and it is around the pacific pacific ocean they have recorded the, the previous one is something like a 22000 uh, kilometers it fly this is uh, they recently identified 64000 kilometers a year they fly on the migration this is something another interesting recent uh, information then some another wonderful thing on the field of birds because these are all very critical when they are then they migrate when they come all the way here how do we handle them how we handle their ecosystem actually them hunting all that issue for is first of all the chemical alteration of our environment all that matters some birds like this what is called bar headed goose again coming from the so northern uh, part of the himalayas to from siberia to india and this is you know this is very wonder this is another wonder which people have recorded this bird is flying over the uh, everest that mean ninth is recorded height of this bird flying is 9000 feet sorry meter 9000 meter there is not oxygen over there how do they fly at that height this is another wonder which even we need to get answer how do the mechanism physiology of the bird operate at that height even without oxygen how do they fly over the himalayas and uh, uh, there are some birds like our siberian crane used to come to india hundreds and hundreds in 1960s 70s 50s and all then somehow for various reason number started coming down of course our own atrocities also in the atrocities of the people on the path of its travel from siberia to india it used to come to our bharat bharatpur national park and many north indian uh, uh, wetlands the even in the 1990 94 95 it's all few were there 96 97 97 when i went there it was or something like only two was there 99 2000 2001 i think the last one has come now there is no bird this is this this stream of the migration of this bird is completely become extinct i am told there are some another group they are flying to china in some one one population still surviving but the indian stream of uh, uh, whatever who are coming to india completely gone extinct this is what we are doing to our migratory bird whenever they come all the way thousands and thousands of kilometers traveling to india their food their location where they come to eat their live they are completely destroying our wetlands are getting destroyed our forests are getting destroyed because these birds need this ecosystem for their survival and we need them in our surrounding for our survival which we are not understanding now but we will get the result only after some time so there are a few more interesting thing when during the migration people are must have many people would have noticed this v shaped movement this is another physics of it the front fellow the small uh, air buoyancy which created the next to two fellows are using advantage of it the next two like that this is a very long but the friend leader will keep on changing they are adjusted because what is that people are try to understand the importance of it when they group together like this the predators will uh, will very very like very less likely to go and attack them and also a lot of many many advantages are there but this is another wonderful thing you can see the long migratory birds then another uh, small thing which salimali center was uh, working quite for last 25 uh, years this is something is some a, a bird is there in andaman in particular and also in some part of the west bengal this is called edible nest shiftlet the nest of this bird is edible because this this nest is made by this shift a small shiftlet a small shift it makes this nest using its own saliva and it is not only it is edible it is considered as some highly medicinal by some culture for example chinese and uh, uh, indonesian culture and all they consider as this uh, many many some medicinal properties we don't know because of that this uh, material of this nest is highly very highly uh, pre precious actually 
two one kilo is cost more than two to three lakhs or rupees or something like that. And because of the same reason, this bird, these people are smuggling, and this this whole population of this bird is was actually going close to locally extinct in Andaman. Salimali Center has attempted to understand, bring people together, and the same people who are actually stealing all this material become the protectors. And now, through the people's protection and put his people's involvement, this particular species now has come back. Number from almost null, nothing to complete. Many species is coming back and survive. But this wonderful thing, this is because this edible, the, the nest is edible and it's a highly medicinal plant. Medicinal. Then a few set of birds are there, which I don't want to speak much because they are they take birth, live, and completely the whole life they live inside the sea. They, and and they don't even many of don't even come to the land at all. Some these called pelagic birds, which if our understanding knowledge about these birds are very less now because many people are even not much. But some of them are very they like this tropic bird. It's very beautiful also, but. But we don't see that in river. It is deep, deep in the sea. They fly around. They live there. But there are inside the sea. There are some islands where the whole island is only birds. Nothing else. No human. No animal. No. Only bird. Like this Pitti Island in Lakshadweep. This only completely the birds. Only birds. Birds island is there. It's called birds island. They are there. They live. They nest and they no other animals and there is no predator. And they go and feed in the sea. They survive. Their their nesting, everything is in the island. So I just what I, I have attempted to take you is to get a given idea about it. Just a glimpse of the wonderful thousand three hundred species are there. Some few uh, 60, 70 groups of the birds. Having one or two, one or two examples because we are actually gifted people. 30, almost 12, 13 percentage of the total world's birds are here. And they are all, these birds are people from the beginning. Human beings, when they are uh, born and started looking at the nature, people were fascinated with the birds. If you go and look at the old Stone Age people, their uh, caves and all, you can see the drawings of the birds. If you just go to our Puranas, our uh, old and traditional folk tales, even local for fairy tales everywhere, birds are birds attracted people. Even today, in any urban area, bird watching is a very wonderful hobby. Many reason is there. Bird watching is because if you go to for a bird watcher, it, you have to get up very early and walk in the nature. Now, if you go to a city, a doctor. Uh, for after for 30, 40, for most of the uh, your ailments, the first uh, prescription you, the doctor will give you will be that uh, go get up early morning and go for a walk in the nature. So that's what a bird watcher do. It's good for the health. And when you go a good bird watcher, when you are going for a walking in the uh, surrounding area, just early morning, when they see uh, uh, some interesting birds, and they, uh, they, 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 get, they get very excited. They, they will make you happy. When they are happy, you know, a day starting with a happy mood will always will be happy. We will be, the whole day will be, it's a cascading effect. So many times I have seen people who are uh, involved into the, uh, in each, in, seriously involved in the bird watching get trapped into it for various reasons. One is a health reason, mental happiness, a nature outing and a lot of things built into together. It's not only entertainment, intellectually satisfying, healthy hobby. So also, and it gives our ability to observe the nature is more. Our ability to observe is increasing. Means whatever we are doing, whatever job we are doing, our ability to observe if it is increasing, it we will do better our own job. This way, observe, bird watching is is a highly uh, actually win-win situation for us. So I invite all the teachers or the uh, whoever the people who are uh, seeing things across the country, uh, this talk, just start looking at the birds coming in front of your home, just everywhere, even in front of you, even a crow comes, look at it carefully or any other bird. They will trap you into more and more. And each bird come in front of you and it reveal to you, make you understand. And that will make a lot of happiness to you and also a lot of knowledge about our own surrounding, ultimately about us. 
we why we are living here why we are how we are connected with this nature this wonderful knowledge makes us it gives a new meaning to our own life that is what the beauty of the nature that is about the beauty of the birds and bird watching i hope all of you will be able to uh, uh, take this forward thank you very much and i thank vigyan prasar for giving me this opportunity thank you thank you so much sir thank you for the wonderful presentation uh, it was just like a virtual tour to the bird sanctuary where we got the opportunity to see and know about some of the amazing uh, common birds of india thank you sir for this wonderful presentation i personally thoroughly enjoyed the presentation and i am sure each of our club member uh, have to enjoy this presentation thank you so much sir now it's time to take the few questions the first question is uh, like what is the appropriate bird census technique ah uh, uh, the question is appropriate <laughs> that is a very difficult to answer because appropriate will change what is the question we are trying to answer this is just like any other scientific methodology what we wanted to uh, answer suppose if we wanted to narrate a complete checklist of what all the birds are or simply you can walk around and get and see whatever keep listing if our interest is to get a population of very spun particular species we have to go very specifically or if you want to population of different different species in that area sent to complete census there are methods like uh, what is it something is census and sampling these two are kind of thing birds you cannot count all the birds because birds are there everywhere so every bird just because you were human census you can go uh, give the number to all the houses and go and get the number from all birds are flying we cannot go and so what we need to do is we have to we have a sampling techniques in the sampling for example the point there is something called point counts and there is something called transect line transect counts and sometimes if it is only a some pawns kind of thing we can go for even total counts but total count mostly what will happen is we select different different habitats and that Uh, depending upon our effort and we have how that how much time we have we will put some sort of a number of uh, 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 points or number of transect we lay transect in that transect the observer will walk on a within a very constant speed and record within a, for example 1 hour 1 kilometer when you walked how much we got it like that many unit we do then finally we take it and through some statistical method we try to understand and estimate what is the kind of population of different species in that ecosystem another way different you have for example 100 points in that location identified each point you go there 10 minutes or 15 minutes you count in that one one surrounding area like that you get a 100 points data which together bring into the computer again statistically analyze that to find out that one. that is the way. there are some Defined, but all depends upon what question you are asking. What question is there? What is the answer we want? What is the question we are trying to answer? Methodology is suited to that. Thank you so much, sir. The next question is uh, that how mobile tower uh, affect the uh, bird population? Yes, like sorry, I didn't. Uh, sir how the mobile tower affect the birds population oh that is a big uh, our rajini gant movie of the two uh, our <laughs> issue robo issue uh, this mobile tower is a bigger controversial issue okay uh, definitely it is uh, there is no solidly uh, proved reason that it is directly affecting birds scientifically there is no proof okay but however why this discussion coming in europe some places some people have correlated the decline of house sparrow and some other birds with the number of uh, uh, mobile tower but there are studies which has proved otherwise as well okay then the now issue is that see the high uh, 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 heavy radiation if it now if we now it is a 4g again now we are going to be 5g then we cannot say the radiation don't have any kind of effect on the living uh, uh, ecosystem around if it is affecting birds it should affect us also if all the animals also that is a bigger issue but at that same time we cannot completely uh, say it is not there as well 
because we don't know it is affecting uh, this uh, some ionizing radiation is affect or uh, is radio even radio waves are affecting the uh, uh, they reproductive cells anything affecting it need a very systematic scientific study to prove it as of now lot of studies but none of in, if you put everything together and see what is a sort of a review what is exactly happening it nothing is really proved okay this only we can say but because there are birds which go and uh, lay eggs in their mobile tower also nothing happened even in the very close by also nothing happened there are lot of examples are there studies have conducted both the way proved depending upon how people are uh, design the study design but we don't have a conclusive we cannot say based on the existing information conclusively this bird uh, this this has a real effect on the birds okay so uh, next question is uh, can birds sense the earthquakes and the natural disasters way before the human beings that is a very interesting question the reason being not only birds many many uh, uh, animals many birds or probably see for there are two reason one uh, they are living in this natural world for example if it is in the forest area or wherever any small change in the nature uh, they have they are very vigilant not like human being we are our society we have completely killed our all extra sensory perceptions all basically nature has to even a one second alertness loss of alertness inside the forest maybe for a deer or something is a death for them something will come and eat them so they are alert all the time even the birds or animal everything so in that cuteness or alertness definitely there have the capacity to seismic uh, rays and other things we don't know i can't completely I very clearly say but their alertness towards the what is happening in the nature including the minor minor uh, warnings which is happening in the, they are they are able to capture that minor warnings which is there before any bigger calamity coming there are uh, warnings of various subtle warnings are available in the nature which we are not unfortunately able to capture because we are completely uh, destroyed our all sensory perceptions basically but these animals and birds have the potential and they are i i'm saying that's why when a big uh, the tsunami happens only human beings are die and the animals which we tied to the poles are die but all the other naturally uh, free animals are survive they are all not only birds all there even before coming with this uh, seismic or some earthquake and all there are reports all the animals got uh, um, wild and they become and all there are reports definitely there could be reason but i don't know i am at present i am not able to answer a completely clear cut answer but there is a possibility for basically for the simple alertness towards all simple warning system that's of they have very much definitely other waves also they must be capturing it but i can't tell me from based on my knowledge at this point of time thank you sir uh, this is the last question that is there any app available that gives uh, that where we can upload the picture of the bird and it can give the name and other details of uh, the bird wonderful wonderful question because this this question has a um, um, uh, implication to all who are listening to that because there is a not one app there is a uh, world wide one big program called ebird ebird is a process if you just go to google and click everybody will get it ebird is a program of a uh, 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 cornell lab of ornithology cornell lab of ornithology that is almost uh, bird watchers across the world every day whatever bird they see they are putting into that web so that we everybody can use that's a free everybody now if tomorrow so you are going to a new place if you want to know what is the bird there you can go into the wee bird and get download what all the bird who are all seen in that fish everything at not time and now you know where where you are going what are you what you can expect similarly whenever you see any bird if you put into this 
So if it is a correct, and there is a lot of checking, balancing system, everything is there in the eBird system. So ultimately, this whole, the more and more people see and put into the web, you first of all, the world will know you there is a bird watcher like this, you are there, you are doing some interesting work, which is good for the world. Apart from that, you can also receive everybody's, you will connect to the entire world of bird watchers, and you can use this data in your own way, and you can contribute to the world of bird watchers and the world of bird knowledge. Because bird ornithology is a subject of people. Because 90% of the knowledge of the, the about the birds in the cold world, as well as especially for a country like India, is done is by local people who are really fascinated and interested to go and see birds. Not the scientists like me or anybody who's sitting in a small institution like that. People who are interested to go behind birds, they are the major generators of the knowledge of the ornithology entire world, also in India. So people who are going and uploading the knowledge, but this is now called citizen science. Citizen science is very important in the field of ornithology. In India, we have more than 80,000 bird watches. It's a huge network. And they are all putting together, India is a great place. We can do a lot of things in the country. And, and I invite the people who are interested to get interested to the birds and learn about the bird, see the bird, even if it is a crow. If you know, identify the two species of crows together and put in the e-bird e e and you will start enjoying tomorrow. Life will be a different tomorrow. Thank you so much, sir, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, now I would like to invite Sachin, sir, for uh, formal vote of thanks. Thank you, Nidhi, Nidhi madam. Uh, thank you, sir, for your, your nice uh, lecture. Or uh, birds ke baare mein kafi sari nahi nahi jankari hai mein pata chali. Abhi mein wohi dekh raha tha Bollywood ki ek movie bhi aayi thi 2.0 Akshay Kumar. Oh yeah. Ek generation pe bhot focus karti thi. Or usse hume birds ke prati ek soch nirman karne mein kafi sahayata hi mili hai. Ki hum pakshiyon ke baare mein soche. Or aapke lecture se aur isme hume bal mila is soch ko. तो मैं आपका दिल से धन्यवाद देता हूँ कि आपने अपना समय निकाल के हमारे विपनेट क्लब के सदस्यों के लिए ये लेक्चर आयोजित किया और इस कार्य के लिए हमारे अरविंद सर और डायरेक्टर सर डॉक्टर नकुल पराशर इनका लगातार हमें सहयोग मिलता है इंस्पिरेशन मिलती है तो उनका भी बेहद धन्यवाद टीम विपनेट में निधि मैडम पवन जी और विपिन जी ये लगातार सहयोग करके सबको प्रॉपर इसका पॉपुलरिटी हम करते ताकि ज्यादा से ज्यादा लोग इसमें जुड़ सके और ज्यादा से ज्यादा लोग लाभान्वित हो सके इसको हम यूट्यूब पे भी पोस्ट टेलीकास्ट रखते हैं काफी दिन तक ताकि लोग बाद में भी इसे देख के इसके इस इसका जो सार है लेक्चर का वो समझ सके ले सके तो जिन दर्शकों ने हमारा साथ दिया उनका भी दिल से धन्यवाद और जो बाद में भी इसे इस कार्यक्रम को देखेंगे उनका भी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद इसी के साथ कार्यक्रम समाप्ति की मैं घोषणा करता हूँ और आप सभी का जीवन सुखमय रहे आनंद से रहे आपका धन्यवाद धन्यवाद